In this video tutorial, I'm going to go over how you can make 3D fractals in Unreal Engine 5.6 using PCG. We'll start off with a brand new project and we'll go to Edit, Plugins, and Enable the PCG plugin. Once you've done this, make sure you restart Unreal for the changes to take effect. Now we'll go up here to the top and we'll create a PCG volume. And once we've created a PCG volume, we're also going to go into our content browser and right click and create a PCG graph. Now for the PCG graph, we can just do a empty graph and we can call it something like PCG underscore 3D fractal or whatever else you want to call it. Now, once we've made our PCG graph, we're going to open up that graph and we're going to see an input and output. And we don't have to really use these but they are there by default. And what we're going to end up doing is creating a custom HLSL node. So we're going to go here and search custom and create a custom node. And you'll get this custom HLSL node. Now on this node, what we're going to do is we're going to set the number of points. So one thing that you'll notice on this node here is by clicking on it, you'll have input pins, output pins. These are things that you can plug in. You can plug in points and output points. Uh, but we're going to change this a little bit. Right now, the kernel type is custom. We're going to change it to a point generator. We want to generate points with this node. And then we have an option for number of elements, how many points we want to generate. We'll start with something small. We'll increase it as we go along. I want to start with 32,000 points. And that's what we'll generate with this graph. Now we'll have to add some code to this, but that'll be our next steps. So to add the code to this node, what you can do is you can click on the node and you can scroll down here and there should be a, a window that you can open and view the code. Now, if you can't really find that easily, one thing you can just check is go up here to uh, window and there is a uh, tab here for HLSL source. And by, by clicking on that, it just jumped over to that tab. Normally, there's a da data viewport tab here uh, to get the source of this node. I can just go to this HLSL source. But if you can't find that, it's right here under window. So once I've gone there, I can start entering my code uh, for this node. Now you'll see there's a section here where we can type. And then there's also uh, shader functions and declarations. Declarations are things that you can can use. You know, you can get position, rotation, you can output, uh, setting scale, setting position. So we're going to be using some of those as well. And maybe to type this code to make it a little bit easier to see, like you could just type it down here where it says shader source. I'm going to start typing float three and uh, typing it in here. But if you want to use an external code editor, uh, that might be might be easier. And just so everyone can see this easier, I'm going to be typing it in uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to start with defining the bounds of our, our PCG volume. So I'm going to do flow three bounds min, and I'm going to use one of those declarations, which is get component bounds uh, min. And I'll get the, the minimum bounds of that box or the PCG volume. And same thing for uh, bounds max. I could do exactly the same thing. Uh, but instead of get bounds min, we're going to get bounds max. So that gets me the bounds of my PCG volume. The next thing I'm going to do is start defining the points. So I'm going to do flow three point position equals, and I'm going to create a grid of points. So create grid 3D. And uh, we have to just have the element index, number of points, which are already a var variable that we defined with the 32,000 points and then our bounds min and bounds max. And it, that just creates a grid of 3D points with this minimum range, that maximum range, this many points. So that's kind of what this is, is doing. And then what we're going to do is normalize the position. So it's a, a range between zero and one. And what that's going to do is just make it a lot more simple and easy to, to do operations on this one. It's in a, a range from zero to one. So I'm just going to do float three. And I'm going to normalize the pause. Maybe let's call it norm pause. And I'll take our point position minus our bounds min and divide that by our bounds max minus our bounds 
them in. So next we have to create the math for our 3D fractal. So I'm going to be doing a, a measure sponge. So it's really just uh, defining the, the formula for that. So really I just need to have like a max depth. So I'll make it six by default and then uh, a true or false variable that checks if the cell is empty or not. And by default, we'll make it false. And then we'll have cell scale. And I'll make that 2400 for now, but we can change that. And then if we want to do some coloring, maybe I can do like a contrast uh, variable. And then maybe also something like uh, the position of the points, which I should should declare here as well. So I'll do pause equals our normalized uh, position. So what I'm going to do is four, and we're going to get our, we're going to make our depth here. So let's make depth zero for now. And then I have depth is less than max depth, depth plus plus. So that's how many times it runs this. And then position and multiply position by three and then the cells. So we'll do our position X and then our position Y and then our position Z. And then we're gonna do our cells here and do our little uh, checking. So if A equals one, that returns one. Otherwise it returns zero. So we're gonna do that for cell X, Y, and Z. And then finally, if statement, and we check if that's larger than two. So here we go. So we're almost done now. And then we can just do our position at the very end here. Cell scale divided by three. And you can change these values and get, get different results, but this is pretty much just the, this is the measure sponge uh, fractal here. This is kind of what we'll have to do. If you find other types of fractals you want to do, just look up the formulas and, and look at how they're they're done. And you can kind of change this and modify this to, to get you a lot of different fractals and a lot of different patterns. So now that we have all this done, um, what we do also have to do is to check to see if the point is empty space. And if so, then we have to remove that point so it doesn't spawn anything. So that's the very last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do if the cell is empty, then what we're going to do is use one of those de declared functions called remove uh, point out to underscore remove point. And then we can take our uh, data index, element index, and return. And if the point's not empty, um, we have everything normalized in that zero to one space, so we have to get it back to world space coordinates. So do that, I'm gonna do float three, uh, world position, and I'm gonna blend the bounds min, bounds max, uh, with our normal position, and that'll get our points back into to world space instead of that clamped range from zero to one. And then finally, if we want to use some sort of coloring as well, um, we, we got to pretty much be able to uh, define the center of our, our fractal and get the distance and, and get some sort of value for it. So what I'm going to do is do a float three called center. And this is going to be the center of our bounds. And then I'll get the distance from that center. So we can have like a gradient effect. So I could do distance from center. If you wanna like color it a certain way and we can use distance, normal position and center point. And then if we wanna fade it, we can have like a, a fade here. So we can use that distance um, from center 
and divide it by some sort of value. Maybe let's do like 8.8 8 for now. If you, you can change that. And then if you want to control that gradient, um, we can have like a contrast control. So I could just say like center fade now and have like a, a power and do center fade by contrast. And we can have a variable called contrast that can can change the, the intensity of it. And then finally the resulting colors, I'll do a float three color and blend this all together. So I'll do a float three and I'll choose some colors here. So maybe more red, uh, some green and no blue. And we'll blend that by maybe something like black. So it is zero, zero, zero. And that will use our center fade. And that will blend those two colors, black and, and kind of like a red with a little bit of uh, green. Finally, we have to output all these points. Uh, so that's where we use some more of those declared functions. We do out uh, set position. And make sure I type that right. Set position, out data index, element index, world position. Same thing for scale, out set scale, data index, element index, cell scale. And then same for color, out underscore set color, data index, oops, element index, and we'll do float for color, but alpha is solid. And that's it. So now we have all our code, uh, 53 lines of code. A lot of this stuff could be removed and simplified, but this gives us a starting point. And we can take it all, copy it, paste it into our custom HLSL node in our shader source. And for our custom HLSL node, we don't really have any inputs. So for input pins, I can go here and just delete the input. It's only generating points. And for the output, we'll connect it to spawn a static mesh like a cube. So I'll drag out this output and do a uh, spawn static mesh spawner. And we'll go on to that and we'll add a mesh entry. We'll go into the descriptor, select our static mesh, maybe uh, one, one meter cube, a socket should work. And we can save that. Hopefully there's no errors. Just keep an eye if there's any errors. And then we can put this graph into our, um, oh, there it is already, into our PCG volume if you haven't. If you haven't, you can go here to your PCG volume and go to PCG component. And under instance here under graph, just pop the graph in there and you should see it spawn. And that's what's happening here. And our, our bounds are a bit too small, like our box uh, or a volume size is a bit too small for the size of that cube. So we could change the, the cube scale. Like we can go into here and set the static mesh spawner and do like a transform and scale it down or go into our, our, our code and change the scale, divide it by more, more values or something. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to take the PCG volume and I'm gonna to go to the PCG volume here and just make the scale bigger, maybe 10 by 10 by 10 units. And I'll delete this floor and maybe it's still too small. Try 25, try 50, there we go. Now we're starting to get our, our fractal, maybe 100. Okay, 100, too much separation now. But if you see that, like, you know, our, our cubes are too, too small, you can kind of just scale it around or scale the cube size and uh, find a value that works. You could probably calculate exactly what it should be as well. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I think it's about 50. Yeah, 50 is the right amount. So now we have our our fractal, our 3D fractal, and that's only 32,000 points, uh, which runs pretty quick. Maybe you can make this a bit bigger. There we go. So you can see the cubes. And we had coloring, but we don't see the coloring here. So how do we get that coloring uh, properly showing up on our actual model? It's, it's actually very easy to do. We have the colors stored. We just have to retrieve them and read them through a material. So to do that, it's fairly easy. Uh, what we'll do is create a new material, we'll call it M underscore, maybe let's call it like PCG fractal. And I'll go into that material 
And in our material editor here, I'll create a per instance custom data three vector node. And this will retrieve stuff from our points, from our instance points in PCG. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the value we have. You have three sets here, zero, one, and two. We're just going to store things into set zero. So I'm going to take this and connect this to base color, and I'll set the color of the, the geometry. Now, that's not all we have to do. We have to assign this material to our PCG spawned mesh. So I go back to our PCG graph, static mesh spawner. Here's our, our mesh that we're spawning uh, under mesh entries. There it is, cube with socket. I'm going to go for the override materials. I'll add a material to override, and I'll add that PCG fractal material. And then we have to retrieve that data, that color data that we have from our PCG points and get them onto the material. So what you're going to look for, what you're going to try to look for is our instance data packer here. So if I collapse that mesh entries, there's this Insta data packer, and we're going to open it up and do our PCG instance data packer by attribute. And then our attribute selector, we're going to add one and it's going to be uh, dollar sign color. And by doing that, we should be able to save. And there we go. Now we have our PCG cubes with that color pulled um, from our HLSL code. Where we have that fade off from the center th to the edges. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you take a look down below in the description, if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link there too, you'll also get the PDF for this video, which goes over all the steps in a little bit more detail.